sit and watch television. And we're getting a picture on the TV. This is an Apollo spacecraft designed for elliptical orbit of the moon. But there is more going on in television than what you're seeing in prime time. A lot more. We have poor quality TV pictures. Offered by the government controlled BBC, which are used to simulate Neil Armstrong talking about landing on the moon uh, with a microphone. And yet he's sitting practically on top of a rocket engine that is putting out sound levels of about 140 or 150 decibels. You want me to really be honest with you? Yeah. Okay, uh, Houston. The moon is essentially gray. Gives on the end of a possible volcanic. Forward. Now we know that that is absolutely impossible to overcome that sound level inside the lunar lander with a normal human voice. We got you now. It's looking good. Over. On all these moon flights. The broadcasts that the world saw were kinescopes filmed off television monitors. Uh, uh, General, what you see on these screens up here is a fantasy, a computer-enhanced hallucination. There's nothing to indicate a simulation at all. Everything's working perfectly. But does it make any sense? Whatever pictures and sound were distributed to the public were strictly controlled and previewed by the federal government. There is more going on in television than many people would believe. It was technically impossible to do it. And it's displayed on the screen. To see how it works, please watch the screen. Let's take a look. You don't believe we went to the moon? I believe it was a brilliant piece of propaganda. I'd like to ask Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, and I'm not quite sure how to ask this question, but when you first stepped on the moon, did it strike you as you were stepping, that you were stepping on uh, a piece of the earth? You want me to really be honest with you? Yeah. Millions of people watched on television. Sixty million dollars each. <laughs> that Neil Armstrong guy. Have you seen him on the talk shows? Neil Armstrong. You mean the first man to walk on the moon? Talk about a fish story. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> These two photos seem to have the same mountain backdrop. Yet, the lunar module is only present in one of them. Seemingly impossible. Since the LEM never moved, and its base remained even after the mission. <laughs> we see the ascent stage suddenly pop up without any exhaust plume whatsoever, as though it were jerked up by a cable. Man, and they're buying it! <laughs> we had difficulty uh, guessing how far the hills out on the horizon might be. Uh, peculiar phenomena is the closeness of the horizon due to the greater curvature of the moon than we have here on Earth, of course, four times greater. NASA could have covered it up. This uh, will never fly. Why do you have to build such a full-scale model? <laughs> Hang the drink the astronauts took to the moon. Astronauts to the moon. <laughs> a vogue drink. You're a coward. We were never able to see stars from the lunar surface or on the daylight side of the moon by eye without looking through the optics. Uh, I don't recall during the period of time that we were photographing the Sona Corolla what, uh, what stars we could see. I don't remember seeing any. Neil, I, I, out of me, out of me, not, not sight. Uh, I don't remember seeing any. Neil, you were, uh, I don't remember seeing any. Neil, you were, uh, I don't remember seeing any. Neil, you were, uh, Out of me, out of me, that's nuts, out of me, out of me, that's nuts, out of me, sign them all, out of me, out of me, out of me, that's nuts, out of me, that's nuts, that's nuts.
say no more. <laughs> now came the most critical part of the mission. Two space surgeons began a complicated operation to replace several black boxes buried inside the satellite. After slicing open the skin, they disconnected hundreds of wires and then reconnected them using the cargo arm as a moving work platform. Got these wires to pick this guy up here. Okay, that's, that's it's a little bit more. So we can see your hand now. See if we can see your thumb. Okay, well that's a good scan of him. There you go. Them good. We can see your hand now. We can see your thumb. Watch again at this pressurized glove as it bends just okay, like a normal that's, thumb would. It's a little bit more. So we can see your hand now. So we can see your thumb. back again, extreme places I don't know. I broke everything new again, everything that I don't. I threw it on the windows, came alone. Steam walls and known will part of colors of my sea. It's a perfect color sea. Steam ways that held me, held me out late at night. Seen places I had gone, but never seen any light. Dirty basements, dirty noise, dirty places coming on. Seem was known, Did you ever like it then? He's always standing in line for this. He's always standing in line for this. Oh, babe. Oh, babe. And it fell apart. It fell apart. Told me, it held me out late at night. Didn't have much to say. I didn't give up the life. I closed my eyes, I closed myself, and closed my world, and never opened up to anything. They couldn't get me at all. I had to close down everything. I had to close down my mind. Do anything is good, got me. Too much can make me blind. I've seen so much in so many places, so many hiding. So many faces, so many dirty things You couldn't even believe He's always standing in line for this He's always room in line for this Oh babe, oh babe And it fell apart, it fell apart Ein Freund und Kamera. Es bleibt. 
dir in Erinnerung. Ein letzter Gruß an deinem Grab von mir, dein Freund und Kamera. Es bleibt ein Blick zurück. Wir gingen zusammen durch dick und dünn. Treu an meiner Seite bei Wind und Sturm, kein Weg war dir zu weit. Und hatte ich Pech, brachtest du mir Glück, du gingst mit mir in die Hölle und zurück. Du warst ein Stück von mir. Doch ein letzter Gruß an deinem Grab von mir, dein Freund und Kamera. Die Erinnerung. Ein letzter Gruß an deinen Grab von mir, dein Freund und Kamera. Es bleibt ein Blick zurück. Myself, myself, 
Sail, sail, sail. 